jump right into our blueberry sure. vanilla yeah. extract. For those of you that have got your ingredients and you're following along, jump on in because here we go. Okay, so this is really quite simple. Um, we have three ingredients. We have um, fresh blueberries, eight ounces of fresh blueberries, and then we have an ounce of our um, Tahitian um, vanilla beans. These are actually our manihi. The, our manihi beans from Tahiti. And from Tahiti, and there's an ounce. So this is a full vanilla extract. It goes 12 months. Right, so a lot of times, like the telltale sign is how many beans we use. Sometimes we'll add just one or two beans to an extract because we want like the blending effect in the background. Other times we want to really bring the vanilla forward and, and quite frequently with fresh fruit extract, we really want to bring the vanilla forward. And this is one of those cases, same with the cherries when we get to that in a minute. Yes, but that being said, if you want to try it before the 12 months, it will be delicious on the blueberry side and the vanilla side, right? Correct. But you'll, you're just going to get more vanilla. And you guys know that the longer it sits in there, the more delicious it gets. Right? Exactly. <laughs> Extracts are ready when the maker says they're ready. So we've kind of found our different sweet spots for the vanilla. Usually it takes about a year in different alcohols to come forward, sometimes even longer. But if you like how it tastes, use it. It's ready. Yep. Okay, so we're just going to start with the beans here. And we're going to slice them and then cut them. And I'm going to use my little um, handy dandy um, seam ripper here that a very good friend gave to me. Um, and I know a lot of you use seam rippers to cut down the middle. And I mean, this thing is just so pretty. It actually says our name on it, Paul and Jill. Um, and really, it is so simple that you really do use it like a zipper. You just kind of go into it like that, and then you keep pulling up, and it just slides. Whoops. Now that I showed you, it's not going to do it. <laughs> there it goes. Super fun little trick. In okay, fact, how big these beans are. I mean, they are huge. And, and so it's just really easy to slice down the middle when you want to open them up and have that caviar there. Um, you can also just use a knife if you want, but I think the um, seam ripper is more fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do it one more time. Hopefully it will work this time. Yeah. And while you're doing that, so the reason that we recommended a Tahitian bean with this one is they're just a little more fruity. And so typically when we're doing anything with any kind of fruit, whether it's fresh or freeze dried, we'll, we'll usually recommend a bean that has more of a fruity taste. And so not only these manihi beans, they're big, they're oily, they're fun, they're full of caviar, but they all have like undertones of, of fruit. Um, and some of the notes that we get out of a lot of the fruitier beans, um, other than the Tongan, which we'll talk about in a minute, are like plums and nectarines and so, you know, I've, I've never smelled one where we said that's a blueberry, but we're trying to find, um, you know, beans that have sort of like the plum and the nectarine and, and more of a fruity undertone to really complement the blueberries, right? Yes. That's why we chose Tahitian. Yeah. So um, it, it's going to be wonderful, that fruity, you know, mm -hmm. undertone with the blueberries. So it's, it's the manihi, manihi is the perfect bean to go along with that. Um, so all of them have been sliced open. Um, you know, you don't have to slice them open if you want to save that caviar for using for later recipes. Or I know some people don't like to uh, slice them open and they like to slice them up the very end so they don't lose any of the caviar when you strain and things like that. So that's up to you. Um, but usually I'll just do it at the beginning. And now I'm just going to cut them in three because I have so many ingredients going into this jar. I just want to make sure that they fit really, really nicely at the bottom. They don't take up too much room because I need um, the alcohol to cover all the ingredients. So I want to make them uh, small, small, small. And I cut off the ends um, before I use my little handy dandy um, seam ripper here. You, I put those in there. There's there's oil in there. Don't don't leave those out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've got my one ounce of beans in here. And now I have already weighed my um, blueberries. There's eight ounces here. So I'm just gonna add them into my uh, pint, one pint mason jar here. So it's 16 ounces. Um, it's gonna give me plenty of room to um, cover with the um, alcohol at the end. And it's really quite easy to fill because it's got that wide mouth. 
I'm going to push this down a little bit. Paul makes fun of me all the time because I use the bottom of my cocktail muddle. It's because it's smooth. I don't really want to smush them. I just want to get them down and there's more surface area on this side. So if you've ever wondered why I use this side for pushing things down, that's why. There you go. So I'm going to push this down because I still need to add in my cinnamon. And we were learning too. I mean, blueberries come in all different shapes and sizes. We have some that are smaller, some that are bigger. And so when you're preparing, we always recommend going with a larger glass jar at the beginning, like you're doing here, because you just don't know what to expect with, and sometimes with the freeze dry as well, they come in really big cuts. And so you just don't always know what to expect. So we always go large now when we're making any kind of fruit extract. And then when we're ready and we're done, we pour it into like the elegant little serving. Uh, yeah, extract. a cuter bottle that, yeah. you know, fits the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, so these are the Ceylon cinnamon. And I just, um, if you look at these quills, they're super thin. Many of you have used these. Oh my goodness, you couldn't smell them at all until you break them open. And now it seems like the whole room is filled with cinnamon. Yeah, right. The, the aroma releases. So it's important to crack them. It makes a little bit of a mess. You get all these little wood things and then they get wet and soggy. It's kind of like soggy paper, but it doesn't necessarily tear apart when it's wet. And it's easy to get out with a strainer when we get to that it's point. Actually not too bad. No. So the big thing about this is what kind of alcohol? Okay, so we've reviewed this a lot. We've got a, a few new people here today. And so just because it's so important, anytime we're working with fresh fruit extract, you've got to use high proof alcohol. Now, Everclear is uh, one that we can get here that's nice. It's 195 proof, Yeah. right? Which is 97.5% alcohol. Um, Starlet gave us this, um, one of our favorite extract makers. It's made in Colorado and it's called 420 Extractor. And it's like an Everclear. It's made with grain neutral spirit. So there's like no taste at all. But just like Everclear, it's 190 proof. Yes. And so it's 95% alcohol. Uh, did I say this was 195 proof? No. It, I, I think I did. It's oh, 190 yeah, proof. So 90, 95% alcohol. Um, the reason that's important. The sweet spot for vanilla extract making is somewhere between 35 and 50% alcohol, which is 70 to 100 proof. Anything above 70 to 100 or anything above 100 proof or 50% alcohol, it'll burn the beans. And so for any extract where we know we're going to be using vanilla beans, like we, we've done here, if we kill them with the proof, it'll actually burn them and they won't extract. So when you're using fresh fruit, you're adding moisture content. You can get online, you can Google what is the moisture content of any fresh fruit that you might be using for extract, so for blueberries. And always with fresh fruit, the answer is somewhere between like 85 and 95% moisture. It can be a little lower, it can be a little higher. So that means you're effectively adding water to the extract when you use fresh fruit. And so by adding water, you're cutting the alcohol content in half. So if you're starting with a 95% alcohol, and you're adding eight ounces of alcohol to eight ounces of fresh fruit, you're essentially adding like seven ounces of water from that fresh fruit. And that's gonna bring the alcohol content to just underneath 50, which is our goal. That's great. That means the vanilla beans won't be damaged and it'll be wonderful. Um, and then when we do our change out in a month, we're not gonna add another eight ounces of fruit because if we cut that in half, we'd be down to like 25%. So instead, we're only gonna add four ounces of fresh fruit the second time which will bring it down to just above 35%. It's like 38%. We've done the math of everything else. And that makes sure that you're in the right range to get a great vanilla extract, plus to get the extract flavor out of all the fresh fruit. Yeah. And so, and it's worth, you know, just talking about briefly uh, because some people will be watching this for the very first time. People say, why use fresh versus dried? We always like dried, uh, freeze dried fruits are gonna give you a very concentrated extract. It's wonderful. We use fresh for a couple of reasons. One, the speed of extraction, like they extract pretty quickly and you're adding all that juice. And two, the flavor is really good, right? Three, it's like 75% less expensive. And really that's the number one reason. From a price perspective, you can get fresh a whole lot less expensive than you're gonna get freeze dried. If you find that with your fresh, you want a little bit more taste when you're done, you can always sprinkle in some freeze dry, let it go for a month if you want, and then strain it out when it's over to get a little bit more. But what we found in our experiments, if we do it the way we just described, starting with the high proof alcohol and a change out of 50% of the volume of fruit, you get a wonderful extract. And then with the vanilla and with the cinnamon in it, you get the vanilla and the cinnamon that start coming out and the blueberry, it, it's spectacular, but that's 
the reason that we're using Everclear high proof alcohol because you've got to take into consideration the moisture that you're putting in from the fresh fruit that you're using. So there's our geeky sciencey part that uh, I enjoy kind of getting into, um, like our nerdy vanilla part, right? That we always say. But that's that's the reason that we're doing it, and it's really important if you make a fresh fruit extract, and if you just put in regular vodka or regular bourbon or regular the rum, it's not going to work. You're going to well, say you'll have flavored. You'll have, you'll have flavored alcohol. Used alcohol. It'll be like a liqueur. Flavored. Yeah. You can drink without it without sugar. Without sugar, yeah. that's true. But it would be more like a cocktail. Yeah. Yeah, your vanilla is not going to extract. Um, the cinnamon is not going to extract that well. That, but not the same as it would with an extract. Exactly. More like an infusion. Mm -hmm. You know, like you'll get a little bit of it, but it's not going to be an extract with that high concentration of flavor like you do when you use a high proof. So it's a really important point. So I've said it all now. I won't say it again with the cherries. We got it all out. But <laughs> okay. anytime we do fresh fruit, it's worth talking about, especially for the people that are here for the first time just learning. Yeah. It's a real important point. It is. Don't use vodka when you're using fresh fruit fruit or rum or bourbon, you're not going to have a high enough alcohol content to make sure that it turns out great. So hopefully there's a couple of you here where you're like, that was really helpful, to which I would say, thank you. <laughs> also, um, there are overproof rums out there that are higher proof. If yes. you want to do fresh fruit with uh, a rum, that is an option. So um, maybe your liquor store in your area might carry something like that. I know we have a couple different kinds here locally. We do. Yeah. High proof rum. So there's like a 160 proof rum. In fact, one of our recipes calls for that in our book, but with 160 proof, that's 80% alcohol. So there's no change out. That means you can only go one round of fresh fruit because you're effectively going down to 40% after your very first eight ounces to eight ounces fruit to Everclear, right? Am I like way beyond my time limit? She's giving me the nod. If she was standing next to me right now, she'd be reaching over and tapping on my foot with her foot. That's the... That's the little, that's the little message that I get. It's just like, you're going again. You're too far away now. So I can just go and go and go and go and go. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. So the last thing we have to add is the Everclear. And it really is just eight ounces. Um, So... There are quite a few, you know, we, we've got a, a full jar here. So hopefully, whoops, hopefully we will cover it. You're going to have to mash it down a little bit. Oh, no. Oh, perfect. oh look at that. Perfect. To the top. You ever wonder what the garbage men think when they're taking away your trash? And we have like five of these, you know, like when we're doing an extract making week. I feel like I need to stand out and tell the garbage man, hey, we're okay. I promise yes. we're going to have to give the garbage men some uh, extract for Christmas. They'll be like, yeah, that's a good cover up, whatever. We actually <laughs> had to explain it to one of our nephews when we first started making it. He's like, mom, I think I know. Aunt Jill and Uncle Paul might have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it's the hobby. No, we just love vanilla. Okay. So um, I'm just going to add my um, masking tape here that says what it is, blueberry vanilla spice. It's got the page number um, on, on the tape so I don't have to go looking when I'm just kind of in my cupboard trying to check out what's going on. Um, let's get a close up of this. I just want you to see how pretty it is. It's beautiful. It's almost sad that it has to go into a cool dark place. I know. Because this would be a fun one just to set out on the counter and let people ask when they come over. I always feel bad when we have to hide him. Well, maybe we do. Like if we have people coming over this weekend, we do. We could just, you know, put it out. Yeah. Make it like a conversation piece. Yeah. Because okay. it's very pretty. Okay. And then don't forget to put <laughs> um, the um, the date on the bottom that you started it with. So here we go. We're just ready to go. How easy is that? Super easy. Yeah. How fun is that? So uh, there we go. Blueberry spice extract done. We'll uh, do another check-in in a month where we swap it all out, right? Yeah. And then we go and park it in our cabinet for like a year. Yes. Well, it'll be 11 months after next month, right? Yes. Yep. So, and it's just that easy. It's beautiful. Super fun. Yep.
All right, that's a pretty one. I, I do feel like like isn't it beautiful? It is like with the cinnamon on top. No, I can't wait to try it. I know. I have tried it. It's delicious. This is one of our <laughs> this is one of our very favorites. We we're I think now through like our second or third I think, but this is one of our very favorites. It's a wonderful extract. Yeah.